So, hmm? let's get to Matt in Oslo, Norway, who hmm. has called like three weeks in a row right at the end of the show, and I apologize we hadn't got him on. Cool. Matt, you're on now. Uh, hello, do you hear me? Yes, we do. Thanks for waiting three weeks or more. The first week you hung up on me, and then uh, I called in too late the second week, and yeah, now, now I'm finally here, and you're not going to slip away this time. Um, Uh-oh. Uh-oh. <laughs> yeah, man. Well. I got you on the hook now, yeah. I, I have the control box for the phone in front of me, so I, I'm not sure who's got who on the hook. But go oh, ahead. let's have some fun. <laughs> let's en let's enjoy it. What's Show's up? Beginning. I have Oreos. Let's talk. It's gonna be a good show. Okay, Max. Um, so I got proof that evolution is uh, bullshit. And uh, you do. Yes. So and let I can me prove creation is now uh, once and for all. Hang, hang do on. You, hang on. Do you do you have a do you have a Nobel Prize to go with that proof? Um, do you have a no, PhD no. in biology to go with that proof? I don't need that. Do you uh, have peer reviewed no, scientific it, papers that you have written and published matters. to go with that proof? <sighs> Martin, come on. That's no, I mean, it's like you are cl you're, you're coming on the show, and right out of the gate, you're claiming that you can show that a foundational pillar okay, of biological right. science it is a bullshit. Okay? I, I admit so, that. Show, so, yeah, I mean, can you demonstrate that you have any remote expertise or knowledge to make that claim? Well, l let's, say, let's say this. You just admitted that it's an exaggeration. It's fine. I'm okay with some hyperbole. Uh, my question is the same one that I asked another caller last week, which is, let's say, for example, that you could, right now, disprove evolution. What difference yeah. does that make? My atheism is not contingent upon evolution being true. Yeah, yeah, no. So, what difference? Is, why would you call into an atheist show to to try and disprove evolution? Because we're not biologists. We're not here to actually review anything. We're not experts on the subject of evolution. Anything we say here could just be incorrect. And even if you proved it wrong, it still doesn't prove that creationism is true. Yeah, there's a few reasons, I suppose. Um, the first one is that I've talked to many Christians and, and atheists, and many atheists say that uh, the reason they can't believe the Bible is because it says that man was created, mm -hmm. and uh, then evolution totally goes against that, you know? So that's a big reason, I suppose, and if evolution actually was proven wrong, then more people would become Christian, maybe. Well, uh, then perhaps. they'd have really so, uh, bad reasons for it. I mean, there, there may be people who say, I can't believe Christianity because the Bible says people are created, um, but... That's only one of many things that are wrong with Christianity, not the least of which is you can't demonstrate that it's actually true. Well, I can demonstrate that it's true, and that's why I'm calling in okay. here in the first place, you know? Well, th well then, hey, then you, I would suggest that you start with proving that your religious claims are true and not say, I'm here to disprove evolution. Okay, well, I got evidence, like, um, for creationism as well. Like, I can, I can okay. start with that, you know? Sure, go ahead. Okay, so um, there's this specific animal I would like to talk about, um, and um, I think it's only logical if it came from creationism, you know? And uh, I got a few reasons for that. Um, first of all, uh, the physical appearance of the animal, like, it makes no sense, uh, uh, considering where it lives at, you know? Well, which and, animal uh, are you referring to? I'm referring to Tasmanian tiger. Uh, you might want to Google that. I was saying. heard of it. You talking about thylacine? Yeah, thylacine. Okay. Okay, like, if you if you look at this animal now, I hope you got a picture up on it. Um, it looks like a dog, right? Mm-hmm. And it's it lives south of Australia. It looks like a wolf, you know, not a, not a dog, but more like a wolf, you know. Like, um, and while at the same time, it looks like a tiger, you know. Mm-hmm. Because of the stripes. Now. Um, this would only make sense um, uh, in the regard, of, you know, uh, because, you know, it has no reason to look like a wolf, you know, because, you know, it's, it's in Australia, you know, there's, there's no native animals that look like wolves, you know. Well, it's, and this isn't, isn't thylacine. And specific animal, Hang on, the Matt. only family of species, like, you know, um, I, it looks like that, it's, it's really, it's really fishy, you know, it, it, I think that's actually creationism, you know. So your so your your argument about thylacine is that you think it is evidence for a creator simply because its appearance is not something that you can think of a better explanation for other than a creator. In other words, its appearance is baffling, and therefore you don't think it could have an evolutionary lineage. That's uh, that's yes. basically your argument. That's called an argument from ignorance fallacy. 
Uh, I wouldn't say that, Matt. Um, I would. Well, it, it is. is. It is. I mean, I'm just saying it is. Yeah. If you say, I think, uh, well, that explanation A is true because it hasn't been proven false, that's argument from ignorance. In this case, what you're talking about is more about what Dawkins has referred to as the argument from personal incredulity, and that is, I can't think, I, can't, I don't see how any other explanation could be better. That's not the way science is done, that's not the way we get to reality, um, is, to, is to say, I can't think of anything that fits this better, um, so I'm going with this. Well, okay, okay, okay. maybe you just wait, have wait. a failure of imagination or education. No, 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 wait, 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 okay. So it shouldn't like directly point towards creations, okay? Okay, that that's a bit ignorant, I, I must say. Um, uh, but wh what about this points towards creationism? The fact that it looks like a couple of different animals, and you can't, you don't see how that's like a couple of different animals. It's, it's more of a you know, a strange mixture that I don't think like. Uh, well, let me let me. Matt, let me ask you a couple of questions really quickly before we go on, and I promise I won't be a smartass, all right? <coughs> Just, I might. Uh, <laughs> no, um, uh, two questions that I have for you. Uh, first oh, off, yeah. uh, I, I'd like to get from you a definition of evolution. Like, can, if I were to ask you, Matt, what is evolution? H how would you define that for me? Well, um, well can you just tell me I what it is? Can you? It, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. This, okay, I think evolution is like the theory because I don't think it's real science. I think that um, it's about the adaption of species um, to, for example, climate changes and stuff like that. And uh, yeah, that's, that's my definition of it, like adaption, changes, and all that jazz, you know. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm yeah. sorry that yeah. you waited three weeks to come in and talk about something that you clearly don't understand. Yeah. See, because when when you when you stumble upon a basic definition like that, it, if you're going if you want to critique a science like evolution, which is a very well founded, I mean it's a it's a cornerstone of modern sciences. That's fine. That's what science is all about: challenging, you know, the the existing paradigm, knowledge, always looking for different answers, new answers, questioning what is thought to be true, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. That's great. But you need to, at the very least, have a sound grasp at a basic level of what it is you're claiming to be able to refute. Okay. Well, and, it, and, and, and it should kind of start, but, you know, it, it helps if you aren't just stumbling through a very basic definition of evolution, which can essentially be said to be changes in the frequency of genes, gene frequencies, allele frequencies, in population groups over time. That's how yeah. scientists, that's how biologists define evolution. Okay. Now, yeah, but so you need to know what you're talking about before you can say, I have really, really good reasons for thinking that th this whole scientific theory is not well-founded, and here are my not reasons almost, based on my understanding. Huh? Yeah. See, here's the, here's the other thing is... And you don't have that. Let's, let's say that you did actually understand what evolution was. Um, and I do, yeah. No, you, know, you don't. You just you demonstrate. You, 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 could not, you could not give a clear definition of the science, of the theory. You couldn't do that you, just now. And you started with, it's a okay. theory, not a fact, which demonstrates that you don't understand the basics of science. Because facts are things that are explained by theories. Theories are the graduation point of ideas in science. Okay, Matt. Facts are Matt. inferior. Facts are just observations. Okay, Matt, but then why does America, like four out of ten Americans, only accept evolution? Because, because they're poorly the rest educated. Of them are poorly educated. We have a very bad really? education. And this, le this leads to case. my, this leads to the second question that I had for you, Matt. Okay. The second okay, question, the second question that I had for you, and the first one was, you know, asking for the definition. In America, uh, we have almost half the almost half the people here. Yes, they do reject evolution. Why? Because we have a very poor educational system in this country. And it keeps getting worse, okay? We have conservative politicians out there who defund education. We have a guy in the state next door, uh, Bobby Jindal, governor of Louisiana, who uh, really, really wants to miseducate children over there. He has a voucher program uh, that will allow people to, to get state money, to send their kids to religious schools, where they will learn that the Loch Ness Monster disproves evolution. So maybe you guys <laughs> and the Loch Ness Monster people could get together on your, on your dueling refutations and, and hammer it all out. But yeah, my question to you is, that. in contrast to America, okay, over in Norway, you guys have really good science education. 
You guys yeah. have a really good educational system. You've got something like 98% adult literacy. It's, it's barely, you know, 60% here in America. You know, you have really, really good schools. Yeah. So how did creationism get its hooks into you? Well, right? I mean, why, are, why would somebody from a culture like yours accept something as completely cockamamie as creationism when you have had access to a much, much better science education than just about any American in a public school over here? Um, well, I, I actually have some doubts about my own beliefs right now. Like, I recently got that. Um, uh, actually, there's not, like, there are other creationists uh, as well in Norway. Like, I'm not the only one, even if you make it sound like that. And no, but what I'm saying is, in America, at least people have the excuse of having bad schools and, and a heavy, heavily religious culture to influence them away from getting a sound science education. You don't really have that excuse over in Norway. So I'm just curious why this was more attractive to you than being able to learn the facts, which you're able to do in Norway, you have the, with the good schools and the good education that you have. I think I think he already told us why it's more attractive to him. He looks at something like the thylacine. He doesn't understand evolution. And no, not only that, no. I also yeah. listen to Kent Hovind and Eric Hovind and Paul Taylor. And, I haven't finished you know. talking. I'm sure you've been influenced by a bunch of buffoons who don't understand science. A bunch of people who are, ta who are polluting so basically what you're saying is the idiots from America that have been poisoning the mind of our people have made their way to Norway. I understand. You've already explained you don't understand evolution and you look at something like thylacine and without even bothering to investigate it, you take a cursory glance at it and say, hmm, creationism explains this better than my lack of understanding of evolution. You know what? You know why creationism seems to explain it better? Even though it doesn't explain a thing, it's because magic works as an explanation for anything. It doesn't actually explain a thing. In order to explain something, we tend to explain things in terms of other things that we already understand. Creationism is an attempt to explain the mystery of the diversity of life by appealing to a bigger mystery. There's no explanatory power there. It is indistinguishable from its magic. And that's why, hey, I just did a coin trick for you. You don't know how I could have possibly done that with my fingers, therefore, magic explains it. Well, I'm sorry that you have a failure of imagination and a failure of investigation. Maybe you could actually go study thylacines and thylacine history, where you've been, you've been and actually, like, gone out and done the research on thylacine DNA and uh, morphology and things like that? Conversion evolution. I mean, w where did you do this? Because I don't think thylacine's in Norway. Did you go to Australia? No, um, you don't need to, like, go and see them. I mean, they're extinct, by the way. Like, I I'm aware years. of that. And so, okay. are, and so are their ancestors yeah. that would offer you the evolutionary explanation that you don't seem to want to grasp. Okay, Matt, I'll admit, okay, this is a bad example, okay? And well, why okay, would you? Okay, well, I think, I think I'll we're agree done. on that one, but... You'll agree what? I'll, I'll agree that it probably isn't creationism then, if you're going to put it like that. You know? Okay, yeah. so right. you call up to say that you're going to disprove evolution, and then we actually explain why that's pointless, and then you, you tell us that you can prove creationism, and your first example is thylacine, which you now admit is a bad example. So... Are you done believing creationism? I mean, was, did, you, did you come in with like your 10th best argument? Because I'd recommend that in a short format show, you come in with your best argument. So what is your best argument for creationism? Well, it's, it's a bit personal, you know, I don't have any empirical evidence, you know, faith is like, you don't need evidence, you have faith, you believe in something, you know, you have to believe it. So yeah. I, I guess I don't have any, you know, real All evidence right, that I can provide you, but... Um, Okay. Three. Okay, Matt. Thank you. Thanks. I, I, I hope that you realize that this lack of evidence um, probably means that you're believing something without a good reason. This faith is not a pathway to truth. Faith is the excuse people give when they don't have a good reason. Now, if creationism is true, shouldn't we be able to have good reasons for it? Yeah. Well, so find those, uh, find those good reasons and call us back. Wait, wait, wait. I wanted, I wanted to talk about something more. No. Yeah. No, we, we, we got have a short show. We have an hour we've, show. We've we got more guys one. to get on, too. Uh, talk about something more when you come back with more. Thanks. Song, Matt.
I don't, that last sentence of mine made less sense than what he was talking about.